Pardon, Barbie? You can ask me any question you want. Well, how come you're so amazing? <laughs> no comment! Ah! Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Barbie movie scenes that didn't make the final cut. She recorded the line? Oh, yes. So this, the audio's there. There's the audio, audio exists. somewhere That's in the world. Right. Right. For this list, we're looking at moments from Greta Gerwig's Barbie that were planned and, in some cases, even shot, but ultimately didn't appear in the finished film. Do you want a Barbie director's cut, or do you think the film is perfect the way it is? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Barbie Pretends to Drown During the film's third act, Gloria, Sasha, and the Barbies join forces to take control of Barbie Land back from the Kens. While unbrainwashing the Barbies, they distract the Kens by appealing to their macho mindsets. Oh, Photoshop is so hard. I just don't understand how to use the select tool. Honey, you can only use the select tool if the layer is highlighted. Let me show you. Between Ken discussing the significance of vinyl records and removing a pair of glasses, the heist almost had another moment involving Judge Barbie, played by Anna Cruz Kane. The scene apparently would have centered on Judge Barbie pretending to drown so that a Ken can save her. Oh. I'm not trained to go over there. I'm trained to stand confidently right here. Based on a behind-the-scenes photo that at MJ Cook shared on social media, it looks like this moment was close to making the final cut. We guess the filmmakers probably thought the heist sequence needed to be trimmed, but we'll let you be the judge. We'll do this until every single Barbie is deprogrammed and ready to take back Barbie land. Number 9. Shelved Kens Ryan Gosling is just Ken, and he's not the only one. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. I got us both ice cream. Cool. From Simu Liu's tourist Ken to John Cena's Ken Maid, this cast is more than Kenuff. But a few other big names almost joined the beach off. Dan Levy, Ben Platt, and Bowen Yang were all approached about playing Kens. Due to COVID, though, they couldn't commit to the three-month shoot in London. What's the name of the mouthy kid at the front desk? I don't know. I'm trying very hard not to connect with people right now. While Michael Sarah ended up being the embodiment of Alan, the filmmakers originally approached Jonathan Groff, who replied, quote, I can't believe I'm typing this, but I can't do Alan. Margot Robbie also made an effort to get Gal Gadot into the film as a Barbie. Gadot was unable to participate due to scheduling, but she has expressed interest in, quote, the next one. She's so genuinely sincere, and she's so enthusiastically kind that it's almost dorky. Number 8. Weird Barbie and Ken Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Sorry about the dog crap. What can I do you for? In an early version of the script, Weird Barbie tells stereotypical Barbie that she's unable to provide assistance due to the giddy-up in her hip. Although this line got scrapped, it's what initially drew Kate McKinnon to the role. You've not seen a grizzled crone that's also a demented avant-garde baby doll and... <laughs> okay, great. I have that in my back pocket. I've been waiting. I've just been waiting for the camera to roll on that. The filmmakers cut another scene involving Weird Barbie and Ken, although based on a behind-the-scenes photo, it seemed to have Gerwig laughing pretty hard. Floating, well, sitting in the pool, Ken enjoys an ice cream cone while basking in Weird Barbie's lap. Maybe this was part of the heist, or perhaps a deeper relationship between these two was left on the cutting room floor. We like to think that Weird Barbie was telling Ken about the time she had a close encounter. Man, you got screwed. Oh, you think, Todd? Number 7. Barbie Land Creation Since the beginning of time, since the first little girl ever existed, there have been... Dolls. The film opens with an homage to 2001 A Space Odyssey. Instead of the monolith, Barbie appears wearing her zebra-striped bathing suit from 1959. We then cut to the movie's title, but Gerwig almost delved even deeper into Barbie Land's genesis. Going off the storyboard that at MJ Cook posted, there was a deleted scene entitled Barbie Land Creation. Barbie, still wearing the zebra swimsuit, is seen holding hands with Ken on an otherwise unpopulated beach. This goes to show that first there was Barbie, then there was Ken, and then there was everyone else. Hi, Barbie! Hi, Ken! Hi, Barbie! Hi, Barbie! Hi, Barbie! The filmmakers likely felt this moment wasn't necessary since we subsequently get another beach scene that fleshes out the supporting cast. It would have provided the missing link in Barbie's evolution, however. And the less I seek my sword from sun to finitive, closer I am to find. Number 6. Emma Mackey in Joke If you've seen Emma Mackey in Sex Education, you likely thought to yourself, Maeve is a dead ringer for Margot. 
Apparently, people also tell Robbie that she looks like the sex education girl. And when people come up and say, I loved you in sex education, I just say, thank you, thank you so much. When Mackie was cast as physicist Barbie, we suspected that the film might reference their resemblance. According to Robbie, the film was indeed going to poke fun at this. Once they got dressed up, however, Robbie and Mackie found that they didn't look that much alike, especially with the latter going brunette for the role. So it didn't make sense to include the joke. I feel like Ma Barbie Margot's got some pretty great, some pretty great numbers. I like to steal a few off her, definitely. Robbie and Mackie really need to play sisters somewhere down the line, though. And while we're at it, let's get Samara Weaving in there as the third sister. I always sort of dreamed of having a, a family. Number five, a little ladybird reunion. I actually want to go to prom. Okay, yeah. I mean. I don't really want to do that. Greta Gerwig made her solo directorial debut with 2017's Lady Bird starring Saoirse Ronan, with Timothy Chalamet in a supporting role. This trio reunited for Gerwig's 2019 adaptation of Little Women. It's only natural that Gerwig would want to bring Ronan and Chalamet back for Barbie, even in a limited capacity. You could be Barbie. I could be like gawky Barbie. <laughs> Irish Barbie. Uh, Ir yeah, Irish Barbie, exactly, yeah. Uh, no knock off Barbie. Um, <laughs> Barbie for a discount price. Gerwig had special cameos in mind for both actors. Alas, the stars sadly didn't align. Ronan thought she would be able to participate since she lives in London, but her commitments to the biopic The Outrun took precedence. Chalamet ran into scheduling issues as well. Yet Chalamet found time to visit the Barbie set, where he said, quote, I should have been in this. Gerwig agreed, although she still loves Chalamet and Ronan with mom energy. It makes me it's, it makes me feel like I'm without my they feel like my children. Number four, Helen Mirren said what to Marie Curie? Gerwig and co-writer Noah Baumbach weren't afraid to go for that PG-13 rating. They established this in an early version of the script that dropped an F-bomb on page one. The joke didn't make it into the movie, and I'm yes. curious as to what that joke was. Addressing Marie Curie, Helen Mirren tells the two-time Nobel Prize winner to pipe the F down. PG-13 movies will typically permit one use of the F-word to slip by, so the filmmakers figured they might as well get it out of the way at the beginning. Mirren even recorded the line in her proper British accent. Gerwig would call this her favorite line, but it didn't survive the editing process. That was, I would say, the line that um, everyone was like, oh, no, no, no. Great line. <laughs> that is incredible. Um, but it'll live on in this podcast. I love it. Issa Rae's President Barbie would work in an expletive before the credits rolled, although this was hilariously bleeped. Is it just my imagination that these Mojo Dojo Casa houses just get dreamier? That's because they're dream houses, mother. Number three, Barbie and Ken lock lips. Wow. <laughs> you can go now. Even if Barbie allowed Ken to spend the night, neither knows what they would do. The actors weren't sure either. There were discussions of having Barbie and Ken kiss at one point. This idea got tossed out because the filmmakers couldn't figure out the logistics of the smooch. Okay, like the two are dolls, so would they just press their faces up against each other? No, 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 no. This isn't the answer. <laughs> Unable to decide how the duo should kiss, the scene never materialized. This arguably better suits the narrative, as Barbie finds that Ken isn't her happy ending. Gosling was personally glad that the kiss got cut, but Robbie couldn't help but be a little disappointed. It's not often you're in a position to kiss Ryan Gosling, unless you're Ava Mendez. Oh, I didn't mean to suggest, uh... Number two, fart opera. From I'm Just Ken to What Was I Made For, Barbie turned in a truly banger soundtrack. Unfortunately, one musical moment was silenced. Huh? Yeah? Weren't we supposed to vote today? What? With her past three films, Gerwig and editor Nick Huey have strived to work in a fart joke. They came close to fulfilling this dream with Barbie, planning a fart opera for the midsection. As funny as Gerwig thought the scene was, others didn't seem to agree. I don't know how we get past this. <laughs> um, and then, and then you do. The fart opera remained in the film until they got about two thirds through editing. Huey felt the fart opera quote was in the wrong place, adding quote, we need to work it into a more significant narrative moment next time. That said, Gerwig and Huey are committed to making a fart joke happen. A Narnia movie maybe? But there is hope, dear. Lots of hope. Oh yeah, there's a right bit more than hope. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Mattel building for rent. With the execs searching for Barbie, 
the company's headquarters is open to renters. Shame on you, executive number two. You think I spent my entire life in boardrooms because of a bottom line? Barbies can save us. Unfortunately, the editor couldn't save this third act moment. I thought that Barbie had made the real world better, but the real world is forever and irrevocably messed up. Well, the real world is not perfect, but you inspired me. Barbie Monument. Apparently, there was almost another monument to go with Barbie Mount Rushmore. Aaron threw security. The cubicle worker almost had an additional scene at Mattel. I'm going all the way up. No one goes all the way up. I have to. You may never come back. I know. Ken Toys returned. One of a few moments that got cut from the climax. Ken is on t-shirts, mugs. It's the number one tattoo. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Midge in labor. Barbie leaves us with a mic drop of a final line, but we wouldn't have said no to a post credit scene. The filmmakers seemingly had an extra moment in mind that would have involved Midge, played by Emerald Fennell. Ah! Oh, Midge. Gosh, I thought we discontinued her. After being pregnant for what we're assuming is more than nine months, Midge finally goes into labor. It's unclear if the scene was going to reveal her baby, but it would have marked an on-screen appearance from Helen Mirren. Great, I feel good about this. Me too. Anyone else want a Gatorade? Tom Clark, who plays a dancer in the film, also confirmed on Instagram that Mirren did indeed shoot a scene with Midge at the care clinic. We don't know why the filmmakers deprived audiences of this, although we suppose it is on brand for Midge to get left out. Midge. Well, let's not show Midge, actually. She was discontinued by Mattel because a pregnant doll is just too weird. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.